This is a general overview of the main components of the roll sill door. So when you look at the roll sill door, you've got your structural components of your head unit. Your head unit includes your controller, your motor, most of your electronics, as well as the drive pipe in which the panel rolls up around. On the left and right side of the door, you've got your tracks. Your tracks consist of the structural portion, a cladding piece, and an egress track. On your right track, you also include the switch card, which is where your push button station is. In the center, covering the opening, is the panel. The panel's made out of three layers of material. And in the bottom of the panel, you've got two tension pipes, which hold weight down. Once we open the cover of the head unit, we'll reveal the inside. There's a kickstand under the cover so that you can work on all the major components of the door while the cover is still on, but we'll remove the cover to show all the components in the meantime. So you'll rotate the cover back down and lift straight up so that the tabs come out of the back of the cover. In the center of the head unit, you've got the controller. The controller contains your PCB board as well as your VFD. To the left of the controller, you've got your motor. To the left of the motor, you've got the encoder, which is counting the position of the door. So there's a small sensor with a sprocket that's attached to the motor shaft. That motor shaft, when it turns, that sensor reads the sprocket. You can see the actual position of the door here is 486. Once you move to the left of that sensor, you've got the chain, which connects directly to the drive pipe. The drive pipe is what the center panel rolls up around to open and close the door. Underneath the drive pipe, you'll see the lead edge bar. The lead edge bar has two micro switches on either side so that anytime that the curtain is rolling down and detects slack, they'll trip and it'll lead to a reversal of the door. The controller is one of the most important components in the door. Inside of the controller, you've got the PCB and the variable frequency drive. On the outside of the controller, you've got a display that shows you programming parameters, actual positions, error codes, a mode button which helps you enter programming parameters, up and down arrows to help you cycle through those, diagnostic lights on the left side of an open and close switch. These diagnostic lights are the same diagnostics you'll see on the switch card on the track, as well as some additional status lights. To the left, you've got programming parameters and all the different options. Above that, you've got a quick start guide for door setup, and below that, you have your list of error codes. Inside the controller, on the face of the door, you'll find your PCB board, which is the brains of the controller. The PCB board and this door come standard pre-wired with connectors that connect straight on the board in unique locations. Along the top side of the board, you have terminal blocks for external devices like switches and external safety devices. To the left of that, you'll have the VFD, which drives AC power to the motor. Behind the door, you've got an audible alarm, the motion sensor, and the home switch, which is the zero point of the door. On our freezer door, we utilize a CMS system, which is our condensation management system. In the back of the control box on a freezer door, we have an additional PCB board. This PCB board has multiple diagnostic lights on the top left-hand corner. To the right of the PCB board, we have a power supply. This power supply runs our DC fans within our CMS ductwork. Our CMS ductwork runs across up the right-hand side, over the top, down the left-hand side. On the left-hand side of the CMS ductwork, you've got a heating element assembly. And then on both left and right tracks, you've got thermistors, which read the temperature on the supply and the return side of the CMS. To remove the cladding, you'll remove the screws along the left and the right side of the track. Once you remove the screws, You'll pull the cladding out and down to see the back side of the switch cord 
and on the freezer door, the CMS and the structural track. Once you remove your cladding, you'll have access to the back side of the switch card. On the top of the switch card, you'll have a 20 pin connector going to the control board. Below that, you'll have two connectors that connect to the inside switch. And lastly, you'll have a small four pin connector that connects to your safety beam receiver. Your safety beam receiver is mounted in the bottom of the track. Your emitter will be mounted on the opposite left hand track. Every door comes with the disconnect. The disconnect is the only location that an electrician should bring power to. Freezer doors and whiff doors will have 240 volt power. Cooler doors or wick doors will only get 115. Each disconnect comes with a pre-wired cord set with a CPC on the end. The only difference between the two cord sets is that a freezer door will have a bracket within the cord set.